Hey everyone, welcome to our Google Plus Hangout with Mark Hominick. Uh, uh, we tried to get Mark Hominick, we don't know where he is, but I found this guy here who's got a bunch of stuff on his face. Are you impersonating Mark Hominick? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I don't here? know, the, the beard is bringing out of meanness and i got to show it in the fight. I, I think it actually suits you. I mean, yeah, ironically I enough, I've known you as a baby face. Well, that's so, just it. Yeah, 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 this looks good. Yeah, maybe look older than 12 now, so perfect. <laughs> what does the family or wife say? My wife that? loves it, so she's, she's like, oh, as soon as the fight goes, you're going to shave it off, but yeah, I might keep it. I'm rocking it right now. So, so you don't know? Don't know. I'm just going to go with uh, how, how it feels fight day. All right. So the decision will be made fight day as to whether or not Mark Hominick will keep that beard. I think you should keep it. Well, I appreciate it. I think, I think I don't know. I'm leaning that way. And that means he's not going to keep it, I guarantee yeah. um, So you said you want to bring some meanness to this fight. Uh, obviously, you, know, you and I have talked about it at length, about the pressure yep. heading into this fight. Uh, we have a variety of questions here from the sure. fans. We'll discuss that momentarily. But um, meanness, is that something that's required against Pablo Garza on well, Saturday? I, I want to dictate the pace. I want to show that I, you know, I'm the more experienced fighter. Uh, you know, I, I want to go and just prove that I'm the better fighter. I belong amongst the best in this division. The way I do that is I go out there and instantly get it done. You know, right. it's not, not not being reckless, not being cautioned to the wind, but you know, show that I'm the better fighter. But there's a fine line between being reckless yeah, and not sure. doing caution. No yeah, it's there's hard. no question. Yeah. All right. Um, there are a couple of really good questions here. We'll start Great. off with um, we'll go with Ronnie. Ronnie said, "Mark, heard you are working on your ground game. Has your BJJ gotten better?" I know you're mainly mainly stick to striking during your fights. Well, you know, I'm known as a striker. Uh, you know, I come from a kickboxing background, so that's what you're. Sometimes you get almost typecast, uh, and, and it's, it's a good thing because people you know, under under underestimate my ground game. And if you look back, I I have half my wins are, are by submission. You know, in 2006, I submitted Eve Edwards, who's you know black belt in jiu-jitsu, and I you know I've I've, I've submitted some top level guys. Just people just overlook that. Brian and Caraway. Brian Brian Caraway. Um, you know, Savant Young. I've had, I've had yep. um, some submission wins, and and it's quite often that I'm, I'm attacking. But people overlook that, and it's it's always better to be overlooked and kind of uh, you know be a snake in the grass, and then all of a sudden come out and pounce. It's funny you say that because remember the conversation with with Pearson. Pearson's like, I want people to know I'm a boxer. Or I want people to think I'm a wrestler yeah, exactly. because you got to mix it up for sure, you know. And and it's it's also a compliment to my striking because people just put me, hey, he's he's an elite striker. But again, you know, this is mixed martial arts, and I'm going into my 11th year as a professional. So for for um you know for me to kind of neglect the ground game is foolish, and uh and that's something I never do. It's it's constant evolution, and that's what mixed martial arts is all about. Irony. Or coincidence. Check out this question here yeah. from MMA fan. Hey, hey, uh, hi, Mark. There was some criticism that your last fight was too one one dimensional. Only punches and no kicks or takedowns. Given all your kickboxing background, do you agree with that assessment? And do you plan to do more? This I, fight? I I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Sometimes you have to, you know, clean the slate. Look at what what's going on. You know, look at my last few fights and our last I'd say five fights. And you know what what am I focusing on? It's been so much on the boxing and. Sometimes you have to remember what brought you to the dance. You know, I come from a kickboxing background. You know, I've been kickboxing my whole life. This is what brought me to this show. And, you know, I fell in love with the boxing and really believe that my hands were just so much better than everybody. That That's where I need to focus. But sometimes you got to – you have to go back to your roots, and that's a big thing is you have to realize maybe you had it figured out in the first place, you know, and, and leg kicks and um, knees and, and – and, Changing up my attack is definitely a game plan in this fight. It's just not just going with there with my hands. Fans are throwing some curveballs at you. <laughs> some of these questions. Check this one out here from uh, SCM88. Hey Mark, being the great striker you are, I was wondering if in between fight camps you ever considered either working with a guy like Freddie Roach on your boxing or going to a place like Mike's Gym or Golden Glory in Holland and working on your Thai boxing. Thanks and good luck. You know, it's it's always good to get some variety, um, but you know, I'm I'm very comfortable with, with with the path and going. You know, like after that fight, we had to realize, okay, how are we going to improve? And we brought in the right coaches. Um, you know, it, it is tough. You know, in between fights with the family and, and and whatnot. You know, just to do those, but you make the sacrifices, and I make those sacrifices to go to Chicago with Jeff Curran, uh, and, and we have a good relationship there. And and also, you don't want to be a gym jumper because I I think there, there there's a lot of loyalty lost in this sport. Well, yeah, that's and, a problem. And, in sport, and, and yeah. it's tough. And I, if you look at all our guys from Team Tompkins, we've been Team Tompkins. From from day one, it's not like we were all we, we came from another gym and then we joined. You know, it, loyalty is very thin in the sport a lot of times, and and I and that's one thing I, I pride myself in. Quite, you mentioned Jeff Curran, who's actually standing right there. He's going to come around before we get so we'll, we'll get to Travis's question. Then I got a question about Jeff. Uh, says, "Hey Mark, how do you like training with Jeff Curran? 
the best. You know, like, I'm very comfortable. It was an easy transition. Uh, you know, losing Sean was definitely you know the toughest thing for. Uh, it's not even a, a comparable. You know, this is the toughest thing. Team 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 Tompkins was built on Sean and and his his commitment to all of us. And we all knew that we had to. Um, you know, Team Tompkins is never going to die. We're always going to be that core unit. Sam, Chris, myself, Mency, you know, the guys coming up. There's so many guys. That we're always going to be a core unit, but we also need a leader in the corner, a leader guy, um, a leader who can, who can uh, you know, move us forward. And and I I I was I knew instantly that my transition was going to move with Jeff Curran because I'm very comfortable with him. We've been working together since 2004, so it was an easy transition for myself. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, with Sam, you know, he he had to bounce around a bit, and he found uh, he fit in best with Mark, Mark Delagradi, yeah. and then Chris Ordecki, he he found it best with Faraz. It doesn't mean that any of us are leaving Team Tompkins. We're just you need a leader in the corner. I you know I, l I learned that the hard way against the Korean Zombie. We just you know, I had so much pride that I just wanted to stay. You know, I can have Sam and Chris in my corner, mm -hmm. but you need you need a leader, and Jeff's that for me. Ooh. <laughs> Is, I mean, are you, are you banning Jeff from hanging out with me this trip? Like, yeah, I can think I hang so. out with him? Because well, you, you, you've always said you can't have us two in the same room. We well, can't leave the hotel. Yeah, you know, I don't think I'm the same as Jeff is saying. That's why maybe why we're a little similar. You know, we have to keep a tight leash on us a lot of times in Montreal. All right, um, let's talk about Mark's camp. How was Mark? Uh, I mean, you came all the way from Chicago. You came up to London uh, to work at Adrenaline, uh, and I appreciate the tweet. I want to come out there, but yeah. the timing didn't happen. But how's Mark doing? How's he feeling right now? I mean, he's taking on Scarecrow. Pablo Gar is a big, tall jiu-jitsu guy. You know, doing what what my role is with Mark wouldn't really work with most other guys because they don't have the, I guess the, the work ethic and the focus and the respect to really just listen to what I say. So when I'm not there, the work still gets done. So it's it's just a perfect fit in that sense. But um, from what I'm seeing, especially the last few days, hitting pads and stuff, I mean, he's he's looking better than ever, and he's brought back his strengths that I think lost, left him for the last few years and um, he was still being dominating as a fighter mm -hmm. and even without those other tools so if we could just add those those lost things back to his game and be who he's meant to be I think he's going to do some do some serious damage on Saturday night. Why not put together a Jeff Kern, Team Tonkins, liver kick shirt? Yeah. In honor I think, of Boss Rutan. Yeah, I th we've wore it before, yeah. So, you know, definitely Team Tonkins, Team Kern's always been one one family. Uh, you know, Jeff was in the corner uh, for, uh, for my first fight in the OC in 2006 against Eve Edwards yep. and Gorgel. So, you know, it, this isn't... That, that's that's what I was saying was that comfort level. It was a very easy transition. I didn't even have to think who my head coach was going to be, you know, when, when moving forward. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you folks. With Jeff Kern standing behind Mark and I, I am beginning to sweat yeah. here. I don't like ever giving my back to Jeff Kern because yeah. no, nothing Finish. good ever comes from it. But uh, we'll continue with this. There's a question here from uh, from Andrew. And I guess you both can sort of answer this without, I guess, giving yep. away a game plan. Hey, Mark, what have you been improving on in training to prepare yourself for Pablo Garza? And I guess the assumption is you're yeah, dealing just, with a much longer guy. I think, like like Jeff was saying, is going back to my roots. You gotta, I have to remember what brought me to the UFC, brought me to you know the Canadian champion and fighting for the world title, you know, like, I have to be versatile, you know, I have to not just so focus on my boxing, and, and I, I think another thing is just dictating the fight, you know, I, I don't want to be the boss of this ring, and I want to prove that, you know, I belong amongst the best in the division, and, and it's Pablo, he's going to feel the pain. Mark and I were talking about this, and you're the start of the pay-per-view, the first fight of the pay-per-view, there's a reason why they put you there, I think. Yeah, and you want to kick off this pay per view, but it's not just making it an exciting pay per view because yeah. you got GSP and Condit in the in the headliner, but to make a statement in the division. There's no question. There's no no greater opportunity, and I've been I've been given a huge honor by the UFC to do that because you know it's it's very rare that you see a guy coming off a few losses to be promoted on the pay per view, Big time, yeah. let alone you know kicking off the biggest pay per view this year. So it is an honor, and and I'm going to take this opportunity and prove why they did that. You know, I think my style caters to being exciting, but I don't go in there thinking, "Oh, I got to put on an exciting fight." Like I said, my my style is that, is that, but I, I want to show that not only it's going to be exciting, but it's going to be dominant. I get my dates and my cities always mixed up. I didn't realize this that this is your first time fighting yeah. for the UC in Montreal, uh, and it's a great question from To Fan actually. How pumped are you fighting in Montreal again? But for the first time for the UFC. Ama amazing. You know, this is it. Like, I had a feeling of nostalgia. As soon as I got off the plane, I, I, was, I was at ease. I was a comfortable. This is where I started my career 10 years ago. You know, I've, I won nine Canadian titles based out of Montreal based promotions, TKO and UCC. So, this is something that, you know, I've been in this situation before. I'm very comfortable in this setting. 
the surrounding, and it, it is, it's a coming home party, and I'm going to come out there and, uh, you know, just enjoy every minute. What's the perfect fight? I go out there, and I show that I belong amongst the best in the division. I take him out. Statement. That's it. You know, I just prove it. There's, there's no, you know, there's no talking. There's no, you know, it's all about action. It's all about, you know, executing what, what I know I'm capable of doing. I won't be surprised if he submits Pablo because I know, I know Pablo's just as good, but I also know Marks is extremely underrated. Any surprise you think Mark can submit this guy or just stick to the game plan and just see if that knockout comes? You know, if, if, if Mark hurts him and wants to go for the submission, it's just got to be natural. But I would think that the way Mark's feeling right now, if he hurts him, he's going to he's gonna light him up. <laughs> you know, it's going to be probably the go-to. But, yeah, I mean, he's Mark's a submission guy like anybody else in the sport the sport he's also a takedown guy like anyone else in the sport he just needs to remind Pablo of that and not let him get comfortable just having to deal with Mark's jab and uh, which is a great jab by the way but added up with everything else it's it's dangerous question from Ash hey you've been fighting for a long time Mark do you see yourself fighting in the UC for a long time to come this is it this is the only organization I want to fight for you know I, I'm, I'm taking that climb back to the title uh, like I'm going into my 11th year um, this is it. This is where I want to compete. I want to compete in the best division against the best guys in the world, and that's where I, where I feel I belong. Now, we've got two Canadians, one American. <laughs> we have to outnumber these guys because I've been dealing with a lot of the American press, talking about George St. Pierre and Carlos Condit. We all know where Canada stands, and it's, it's, you have to realize you know where the Americans stand. So I'll ask you first, GSP versus Condit. What's going through George St. Pierre's mind mm -hmm. right now? What kind of performance are we expecting? Because we know, we know it's 18-month layoff. Yeah. We know, hey, listen, Condit's got a natural, it's the natural born killer yeah, for, a for a reason. This guy is is, is, a, is incredible. Yeah. What happens on Saturday night well, event? If you asked me this question three, four weeks ago, I would be, you know, Condit, oh, he's so dangerous. He's, you know, because of all those things, and he is. He, he's so dangerous because he'll fight you anywhere. He'll fight you in the clinch. He'll fight you from a distance, on the ground. If he's on his back, he'll be attacking. So he's one of those fighters where you're never comfortable because he's always attacking. So, you know, I was almost getting nervous for George a few weeks ago. But then the second I seen George here in Montreal, that just completely left. And he, George is ready. He is focused. You can just see it. You can feel the energy around him. He, he's ready to prove that he's the best in this division. Can you protect your neck? Pardon me? Protect your neck. Yeah. Ask, we're asking Jeff the question. It's been a while since I choked him. But. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's discuss, uh, from an American standpoint, what's, what's the feeling like down south of the border as Carlos Condit, the interim champ against the real champ? They both think they're challengers. They, we all think they're champions. What's the feeling south of the border, and what do you think is going to happen on Saturday night? I think they're both, uh, both humble enough to feel that way, but yet they are both ready to show why, you know, why they have the belt. And I don't think that the layoff and, and the mental stress that comes along with both sides of their both sides of them is something that affects a fight of their caliber. Maybe a few tiers down in the middle middle levels, but they're where they are because they're mentally tough. And I uh, just I'm really just excited to see it. I don't have a prediction one way or the other. I think that um, as far as ground game goes, someone asked me this on Twitter the other day. What my opinions were was a better ground game. I said I just in theory, could only tell you that I think GSP would be more dangerous on the top, and Condit would be more dangerous on his back. And so John that Danaher makes thing? a good fight right there. So is John that, Danaher thing, because John loves a top game. He's just, you know, the long legs makes Carlos the bottom guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of in automatically puts GSP to me as being the top guy. So it makes. It just makes a good scrap, even if it's GSP on top and Condit on his back. It's just going to be a busy fight, it's something everyone's going to enjoy. We were joined by Erica. Uh, we'll, we'll address the question because she, sure. she joined us. Hi, Mark. Quick prediction for Saturday. How do you see yourself beating Garza? I love you. Best of luck. <laughs> well, do you love the beard? That's the question. Do you love the beard? <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Erica. Uh, you know, my prediction is a win. That's it. You know, that's all I'm focused on. Uh, you know, i got to get back in the win column. That's what's going to happen on Saturday night. Uh, what is the motivation or stress or something that's going to keep? Because, you know, as we get closer to yeah. the weight cut, the butterflies start going and nerves and stuff like that. What's, what's you know, that? Th this week, I enjoy this week. You know, a lot of people dread this week, the cutting weight. And, you know, I, I try and enjoy it all. Like, I, I take this in. Like, I'm getting to live my passion, live what I truly love to do every day. And this week is fun for me. You know, it's, it's very rare that I get time where I have a week to just, you know, chill, relax, get focus on the fight, do interviews. 
you know, I try and take it in because I'm a fan of the sport. I'm, I'm, you know, an athlete, and this is this is what I truly love to do. So this is a fun week for me. Um, you know, stress. I, 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 I really, honestly, God, don't, uh, don't stress too much in fighting. Not your first rule. Like, it's not, yeah, but even like my first fight, like I, like I, it was, I was, like I have a sense of, you know, it's like um, hard to explain, but just. Calamity. Very, very calm. focused and yep. very focused, but, but calm. Exactly, relaxed, relaxed and focused, and, and that that's what this week's all about. By neighbor, hey Mark, <laughs> take the beard. You look bad, Astrid, Astrid, Astrid. Pretty sure I know it. Just think donkey. Uh, Tempsford is all cheering you on. Go kick his. Well, I appreciate that, Tempsford. I definitely want to make Tempsford proud, and <laughs> yeah, I mean that's my hometown. This is this is you know a big reason why I fight as well. Well, we're excited to see you on Saturday night, but we have to talk about one person since Jeff is already here. Yeah. You and I always talk about Pat Curran, uh, how much I think this guy is just an unbelievable beast. Can you give us your thoughts on Pat Curran? Uh, he is a Bellator featherweight champ right now, so yeah. even though he's out for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get your thoughts momentarily, Jeff, but uh, Pat Curran is a guy that I've been talking about a lot on the radio show and on the TV show. Um, your thoughts on Pat Curran, one of Pat the best Curran, featherweights. Pat Curran is the best guy I've ever trained with in my weight. I honestly, I, I think he would... I think he could beat, you know, Jose Aldo. If you know, compete with him for sure. You know, he his he just needs the, you know, the exposure that he deserves. He he's so talented, he's dangerous in every aspect, and he he's a, he's a ruthless killer on that mat. What's the latest? You know, I, up. I, yeah, he's healed. He's training. Uh, he just mopped through two divisions at uh, the S seven grappling tournament. Submitted everybody. <laughs> And um, that's insane. Darted every match on his back. Didn't even take the takedown points he could score and beat absolute division. He just you can't go on the ground with him. He's he was trained from scratch from me, and then he started to get it. You know when somebody starts to understand something and they start to write their own music, and that's what he's doing. He's just creating things that work for his body type and his game and. That's just something that no other jiu-jitsu instructor out there is going to be able to predict what it feels like to be on the floor with Packer. And not to mention he's got knockout power and yeah, man. he's yeah. really good on his feet. So it's dangerous, man. Actually, we got two questions before we sure. go. You do good? Yeah, you bet. All right, first one comes from uh, Original 6IXX. I guess I should say Original 6. Hey, Mark, how healthy are you feeling for Saturday? You know, it sounds cliche, but you know, it's the best I felt. I think the main th the um, the main thing is is take. I took a little time off after the uh, the last fight and just kind of clear my head, because for 15 years I, I I didn't take a day off type thing. Like you know, I, 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 exactly. And I think I needed that refreshing uh, time with my family. Come back, you know, motivation's never been an issue. So I shouldn't say remotivated, but I just you know healed up. You know, and had a healthy camp as opposed to fighting through injuries the whole camp. Uh, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just focused and relaxed. I think it's, 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 it's just, it's a, it's a weird combination to be both. But I, I'm feeling uh, that's the feeling I have. Final question comes from Ash. I'm sort of sensing some irony. I don't think it's uh -huh. the wife, but uh, it comes from Ash. Uh, hey, Mark, would you say that your defining moment was fighting Josie Aldo Jr. at UFC 129? How did you overcome that injury? I couldn't believe how. You stayed in that fight despite your appearance. All the best. For sure, that you know that thus far that that's been the defining um, moment of my career. It, it felt like it was a 15-year overnight success. You know, <laughs> like that's a, that's the best way to describe it yep. because I trained, competed for for 15 years in sometimes obscurity. Like you know, I definitely I fought in the UFC, but for for the average fan, you know, no one knew my, knew my name, and then all of a sudden overnight. It just became that everybody knew who I was in the sport. I really solidified my spot, not just in the featherweight division, but in the UFC, and it put me on the map. And, and yeah, that's been my defining moment so far. But now it's my responsibility to take that momentum that I gained from that fight, carry it forward into another title run, and then wear that belt one day. Um, and what was the other? How did overcome the injury? Yeah. I didn't even know it was there. Like I thought it was a cut. You know, like. It, uh, that's I have very very tunnel vision like very much tunnel vision in a fight like I don't hear the crowd um, I don't like I just wanted to win well, you know? especially considering it's a title fight yeah it, I, right? you know why it could have been in my backyard like okay. you know I think that's that's just the way I approach a fight like I try not to let any distractions but you know when they stopped to look at me with the doctor I thought it was a cut like I had no idea obviously it was a hematoma I didn't even know until I got to the hospital 
Got to give props to Jason Sue, the doctor for yeah, the he's, commission. Yeah, he saved, saved that fight. You know, yeah. that after that, after the the break there, that's when I turned it on. And yeah, the doctor and John McCarthy as well, because he stepped in and said, "You ready to go, Mark?" And I said, "And it wasn't I mean, if Jason, Doctor Sue said it wasn't even the hematoma. Yeah, that he was, was the worried issue. about it my was other the eye. Vision it when was you were, my he was other doing eye. that. Yeah, so. it was my opposite side. Yeah, like it was it was it was a Craziness. war. Like I mean, that that was a that was a fight that'll go down in history from the USC. And again, I I didn't even know the impact that the fight had until after until Monday morning. Because that Saturday night, I was I was bummed that I lost a world title fight. Sunday, I was bummed. Then Monday morning, all of a sudden, I realized the impact that the fight had. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, big fight coming up Saturday night. Pablo Garza, a lot of pressure for Mark. Uh, wants to make a statement in this division. He is kicking off the pay per view. We can catch all the prelims on Sports. And first, we got a preview show. We got a weigh-in show today, or sorry, tomorrow. We got a preview show uh, on Saturday. Check your local listings for start times in your area, Mark. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it. appreciate the support, everybody. Thank you very much. Jeff, thanks for dropping by. You got it. Can can Jeff and I hang out or no? Oh. After Saturday. Yeah, I was gonna say when the daylight daylight's still here. Thanks everyone. Have yourselves a wonderful day.